Hey, 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 it's seven o'clock, it's Wednesday night. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Monique Bradley, kia ora koutou. If we haven't met before, but you're following me on Facebook, you probably know I'm the woman who's lost more than 40 kilos in weight and I am still losing weight by eating real food. Do I give in to treats? Yeah, I do, I enjoy them. And my goal with these live streams is to educate people that when we deprive ourselves of the food that we really love, chances are we sabotage our diet goals as well. So I've come up with a bunch of recipes that will still meet your diet goals if you're on a continual diet like I am, but it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. That's what these live streams are all about. So tonight we're doing two things. First of all, I'm going straight to the newsfeed. I'm saying hello to everybody watching. Joss Allsworth, good to see you. Megan Keating, welcome to tonight's stream. Sharon Sawyer, how are you doing this week? Great to see Raja, who's watching from Kashmir in India. Rick, I hope you've got the stream live and working now as well. Hello, everybody. It's great to have you with us. Now, tonight, because I can see all the streams that are going out, if you've got any questions about anything I'm talking about, because we're doing a recipe tonight, and we're talking about cravings and how to deal with them, where they come from, how to beat them, or how to move with them, that's the topic for tonight. If you've got any questions, send your questions through. My diet journey has been a journey of study, which has basically taken me 25 years to work out. And for me, it's simple. It's about reducing carbs. It's about getting rid of processed foods. It's about having the occasional treat and not beating myself up about it. So tonight's recipe is chocolate bark. And the reason I'm doing that is because quite often in all the weight loss groups that I'm in, they're always talking about how do I deal with chocolate cravings? And my answer is, I still have chocolate and I'm still losing weight. How do I do it? It's about the choices that you make and the foods that you add to your diet. It's not about the things you remove, it's what you add. So the first ingredient I'm adding is a product that I don't get paid to tell you guys about. And saying that, Health Reese, if you're watching tonight, you guys need to sponsor this because seriously, this is one of the best low carb products I could ever recommend if you're a chocoholic like me. These are health -aries, no added sugar or no sugar added, low, low sugar. It's sweetened with stevia. Um, on the back here, there's one gram of carbs per serving. There's 10 servings in a pack. You only need a tiny bit of this product to feel satisfied. And that is the joy with a, with a recipe like I'm making tonight. It is high in fat, but what I've learned on my journey is that fat's actually a good thing. Fat's what keeps me full. And in fact, by adding more fat to my diet, by reducing the amount of carbs and processed foods that I had, and by adding more protein, losing weight's been easy because suddenly my body needs everything that it needs to actually function optimally. Now I've got a big tablespoon here of coconut oil. I'm gonna put one and a half, for that amount, probably one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil. Now you can make this chocolate bark recipe using, mm, I love coconut oil, using a double boiler. I'm not going to do that tonight because I don't want to be here all night. I've got another string coming up for my private group at 7.30. So I'm going to pop that in the microwave for about ooh, 40 seconds, 40, I'll go 45 seconds. And then when this recipe is basically freezing solid, it'll take just a couple of minutes to show you, we're going to delve into the topic of cravings because it seems to be some of the biggest way, reasons why people don't uh, succeed in their weight loss goals. Andrew Stewart watching from the UK. Kia ora to you, my flower. How will you be today? Miss you, think of you often. Great to see you. Oh, Lynn, you're li liking the new view. We've twisted our kitchen around the other way. So you've got the long view here. Gives me much more bench space, especially when I'm doing two live streams in the night. Um, great to see you. Raja, wow, you, you like my jacket tonight. Thank you so much, Raja. Um, I know, I love the colour as well. Red is actually the colour of personal power, but at the same time, did you know, and this is good to know if you are trying to lose weight, if you've got a lot of red decorations in your house, the colour red actually stimulates your appetite. So you need to be a little bit careful about that if you've got lots of red furnishings in your home. So I'm going to throw that back in. Now you see that's pretty liquidy and you'll think, oh, that's not going to work. This is very similar to how I make my, my Rocky Road. I'm going to pop that in for another, another 45 seconds. And then basically chocolate bark is as simple as pouring all of your chocolate 
onto a baking tray. And then you're just gonna add a bunch of your favorite toppings. So what do we crave the most? We usually crave chocolate and something sweet. So we've got that covered. We usually crave something crunchy. We usually crave something salty and we usually crave something creamy. So this really helps if you are in that position where your cravings won't stop, a little bit of this will actually serve you on your diet. Crazy, right? So to help tonight, I've toasted some uh, Brazil nuts here, which we're gonna blend up into small pieces and then get rid of that sort of, that husk on the outside. Now, these are fantastic. They're loaded with selenium and our soils are deficient in selenium. So one of these a day gives you all the selenium you need in your diet for optimal health. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever heard? But it's absolutely true. The other thing I'm gonna add in here, and this is, this is a little known secret. You can add in something salty and crunchy. So you could choose some salted peanuts, roasted salted peanuts, or you can choose, I've, I had cashew nuts in the, in the cupboard tonight, so I thought I'd throw some of these chopped up as well. So it gives me that, that salty hit. And then what I ideally want to add into my chocolate bark is some freeze-dried raspberries. Now raspberries are low on the glycemic index, so they're one of the better choices when it comes to looking for a low-carb option for your diet. It's not going to mess with your blood sugars too much if you're really carb-sensitive um, or sugar-sensitive. It's a, it's a really good choice. Now, this is milk chocolate, but I actually want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm actually going to add into the mix, and I want to thicken it up a little. I'm going to add some cocoa in here, and that's because I really like that slightly bitter taste that um, dark chocolate has. I also want to thicken this up slightly. Yeah, that's going to work a treat. And this just gives it a really nice, slightly thicker texture that we really, really want. Okay. We've got our chocolate sitting there, that's ready to go. Now because I don't have freeze dried raspberries tonight, I went into my fridge and I thought what do I have that kind of will add a bit of colour to this recipe? Well I have some marshmallow that I made, it's low carb so there's no sugar in it, sweetened with a little bit of stevia. I made this probably four weeks ago and I just keep it in the fridge where I feel like that kind of spongy, slightly chewy hit. Amazing, this stuff goes on and on forever and you can cut it into shapes, you can give it to people for presents, but the best thing is if your kids love marshmallow, you can make it with them. It's a really easy recipe on my website, which is www.moniquebradley.tv, so you can get the recipe, you can download it and try it. You can make it with sugar, the measurements are the same. I used stevia in this, powdered stevia, because I don't want to mess with my blood sugar levels at all. If you make it with stevia, it still tastes great. And the best thing is if your kids eat it, they won't go nuts. That's always a bonus. Right, got my container here. Who else is on the stream tonight? Laura Charming, good to see you. Oh, Joss Allsworth saying hello to Andy Stewart over in the UK. I'm gonna blend up a few of my Brazil nuts in here. Now, I really don't want those, um, those skins on the outside. So I'm just gonna basically blow them off once I get them out of the container. Hi Kelly McGurin, good to see you. Right, sorry about the noise there. Powdered down beautifully. In fact, all of those bits have kind of, that's fine. They've kind of blended down nicely. You can't even see the skins in there. Nice, we're gonna sprinkle some of that into our chocolate bark. So I'll grab a container and put that in there. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're gonna do the same with our cashew nuts. And we're going to kind of mix it up when we pour this all into the tray so that every flavor is kind of in every different mouthful. It's kind of what, it, well, that's kind of what I like. I like to mix it up a little bit. That's why I love making Rocky Road and things like that as well. Oopsie. Right, there we go. How are you guys doing anyway? Claire. Hi, can't wait to make the, what did you say, Claire? You can't wait to make this. Oh, honestly. This is, this is child's play. If I can do it and still talk to you guys and breathe <laughs> at the same time, uh, look, it is super easy because I made the decision I was never, ever going to make anything that was going to be too hard because why? Life, life's too busy already. I want to make my life as easy as possible. That's really what my whole show's about. So, Okay, so we've got some lovely salty chopped up bits of cashew nut in there. And this could not get any easier. We're gonna basically 
pour out. So we've got our delicious dark chocolate in there. Now with this, you don't have to use the Health Rest chocolate, which is what I've chosen tonight. I just work with this product all the time, so I know, I know it works really well. Uh, but you could use like a really nice, like a 70% dark chocolate. Um, they tend to be lower in sugars. And the, the benefit is, of course, they are loaded with, with really good antioxidants. Um, and the dark chocolate, you only need a small bit to be satisfied, which is really cool. So I've probably used, gosh, maybe half a cup of these chocolate bits. So it's a pretty low maintenance recipe as well and pretty cost effective. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. Look at that. Oh yeah, chocolatey goodness. I'm gonna throw in some little bits of marshmallow, a few marshmallow hits. And again, the kids love this sort of thing. You can add, if you can get um, the sugar-free white chocolate drops, you can add those in there. If you're not worried about your carbs like I am, look, you can add some dried fruit in there. I tend not to. I keep away from it because it's just too high in sugar for me and my body just doesn't like it. Okay, right. What are we going to add in there next? Wipe that off my hands. We're going to add in some little chunky bits. I mean, look at this. It's pretty amazing. Little chunky bits of our Brazil nuts, which is, again, going to satisfy that craving for something crunchy, but it's giving you that selenium you need for your diet, and that's just going to sink in beautifully. So, again, this is going to be really easy to smash up once it's all... Um, once it's all frozen in your freezer, and then basically you just need to keep it in the fridge. So if you do get struck with a few a few cravings, look, this is this is all you need. And then our crunchy, chunky, yum o, cashew bits. And this is as hard as it gets, my friends. You can add roasted or toasted coconut in here. Oh, so good. Seriously, just thinking about it, I get the goosies and I start drooling. <laughs> it is really really good. Oh, Giselda, nice to see you watching. I hope you're doing well. I think of you often, and um, thank you for keeping us posted on Facebook, sending you lots of love to Australia. Good to see you on the stream tonight. Right, this, my friends, this chocolatey, yummy goodness will go into the fridge for a couple of minutes, uh, into the freezer, actually. So that I'm going to pop that in the freezer now. We're going to chill that down. And once that's done... Hopefully that fits in the freezer perfectly. Once that's done, which is in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to bring it out, we're going to smash it up, and I'll show you how to serve it. So it's great for a low-carb dessert. If you've got friends coming over for dinner and you want to serve ice cream, a little shard of this sticking out of a ball of ice cream looks really flash. Uh, it's, it's really good. And again, it's if you make it with the right ingredients, it actually ends up serving your health. So because this is quite high in fat, for those of you who are doing a low carb, high fat diet, this ticks the boxes because there's practically no sugar in there and that's what we love. It's only one gram of carbs per serving and there's 10 servings in the pack. We probably use two grams in here, which means we've got, oh, sorry, yeah, two servings in here, which means about two grams of carbs. Over that, you'll get probably 20 pieces from that. So it is extremely, extremely good if you are on a low-carb diet. So, my friends, let's talk about cravings. And this is a really big topic because so many people message me going, oh, but how do you deal with cravings? Well, as you can see, I eat chocolate, uh, I eat nuts, I eat salted nuts. I'm not really super strict on on depriving myself and that's why I think I've been able to lose more than 40 kilos in weight and every day I wake up and I notice another change has happened I mean I've gone down another jacket size in the last uh, six months I've had to get rid of half my wardrobe so so many things are happening and it's it's not so much by thinking that some foods are bad some foods work perfectly for some people's genes but for a higher proportion of people, particularly if we're not very active or once we get over that age of 40, and there's a huge amount of us who are, chances are our metabolisms are slow, slowing and we may notice we're getting a little bit of weight gain through the middle, through the hips, a little bit of a jowl going on. Chances are we're actually storing excess fat because our bodies can't burn the carbohydrates that we're used to eating. So the carbs that fueled us as a kid so we could run around and play and climb all sorts of things, 
we don't have as much use for them. So we're leading more sedentary lives, we're spending more time on the computer, and all of a sudden we're not burning our, fo our food in the same way. So it's really about playing a game and finding which foods inflame us and which foods fuel us. And that game kind of changes as we get older. Well, this is something I've learned. So for me, I've got my genetics that play against me. So I've been genetically tested and I know that I'm in 10% of the population which has uh, basically has a precursor or, or, or a dominance towards obesity, heart disease and diabetes. So out of a spectrum of people, there's me and a huge amount of other people who basically can't process a lot of carbohydrates, which is why I ended up on this low carb journey. And the more that I talk to people who are experiencing symptoms of IBS or unexplained weight gain, the more I realize that they're in that same position as me. Well, I guess, you know, it's like the law of attraction, you attract what you are. These are the people who are reaching out to me asking for help. So this is the information I've, I guess I'm in a great place that I'm able to share. So for me, when I eat carbohydrates, the first thing I notice is that I bloat or I get an upset stomach, I get brain fog, and then gradually I notice my stomach becomes uh, bigger and I start to crave more and more sugar. And what's actually happening is because my body can't process uh, the carbohydrates properly, I'm actually becoming insulin sensitive. So I've got higher increased amounts of cortisol, higher amounts of insulin. And because I've got higher amounts of insulin in my body, I need more sugar to balance it out. So it becomes this vicious cycle. So for me, I've had to retrain my body. And with that, I've actually started removing my cravings. So let's take a look at why. First of all, let's have a look at the first screen. There are three types of cravings I wanted to talk to you guys about. Good evening, Barbara Shelton. Good to see you on, this, on the stream as well. Okay, the first one. If you're craving something, it could be that you're not receiving the right nutrition. So if you're eating the same foods over and over again, or you're eliminating particular food groups, you may be missing out on the nutrients that you need for your body to function optimally. So that can manifest as types of cravings in your body. And we're going to go into the details of which cravings correspond with which food. It could be, and this is a real big one, it could be emotional cravings, or it could be a bit of sabotage, some negative self-talk going on. And you could be actually addicted to or crave foods that actually make you feel like crap. I've had that craving for a number of years. I was addicted to diet drinks and they actually made me feel sicker and sicker and sicker. Then the third type of craving is associative. What do we do at Easter? We crave Easter eggs and we crave hot cross buns which is why I came up with my own recipes to get me through. And with an associative craving, I don't know if you guys have great memories of your parents and having that real delicious roast chicken dinner. In fact, just thinking about going to see my mum in Wellington, all I can think of is her delicious roast chicken and the stuffing that she would prepare with it. The chicken's good, but for me, my body can't process the stuffing. So I've had to retrain myself to look at a great alternative. So stuffing made from cauliflower is a, is a great example. So there's three key ways that we can get triggered for cravings. We're going to go now into the nutritional side. So it's basically the science of cravings. So when you're craving chocolate, for example, it could be magnesium. So if you're waking up several times in the night or you find it hard to relax, you are actually magnesium deficient. So raw cacao or something like this that I'm making tonight is actually great. You can add lots of extra seeds, vegetables, and a bit of fruit if you can have fruit and it doesn't mess with your sugar levels. If you're craving sugary foods, I mean, look at all the deficiencies going on there. How can you replace those deficiencies? Well, instead of going for sugary foods, why not try some protein? So some yummy chicken is a great option. I've got a great paprika chicken recipe actually on my website, which uh, was given to me, shared with me by my friend Marcelo. Absolutely amazing and really good if I do ever crave something sugary. When you're craving bread, pasta and other carbohydrates, look, it's a lack of nitrogen. So again, protein is a great way to deal with that. Have a little bit of protein, have a handful of nuts, and you'll actually override that craving. When it comes to oily foods, it's actually a lack of calcium. So this has been mind blowing for me. So you can have a bit of cheese. 
So you'll actually satisfy that craving for oily foods because there's some fats in the cheese, but at the same time you'll get the calcium hit you need. And then when it comes to salty foods, not only is it chloride and silicon, you are actually dehydrated. So who knew? So that's the science of cravings. But it's really important when you do have a craving to ask yourself, is it actually a craving? Am I actually craving a food? Am I craving attention? Am I bored? What happens if you have a craving and you go and do something different? You change your focus. If you come back in 15 minutes and that craving is still there, you've got to address if it's nutrition or is it nearly dinner time? Are you actually hungry? So there's some really important points to, to ponder there and all of this content will be loaded into my website, moniquebradley.tv, so you can have a look through and ask yourself those questions. So cravings happen because of nutrition de deficiencies, but on the flip side, there's a huge portion of it which are related to our emotions. So when it comes to chocolate, scientifically proven, the psychology of it is that we're actually looking for love. So we're looking for something creamy, a beautiful, delicious, creamy, lovely hug. That's what we're after. Sweets are actually have been likened to a lack of joy or sweetness in our life. Salty foods is actually related to stress. So you see there, it's to do with the sodium that we need in our body. And again, it's linked to dehydration as well. Carbohydrates are associated with comfort food. So if you think of yummy fresh bread or, you know, the foods that your parents gave you when you were a kid. So it might have been plain toast or my mum made the most beautiful scones. So whenever I'm craving something like that, I have to actually address What's the comfort I'm looking for? Or am I feeling a little bit stressed? What's actually going on? People who are looking for fatty, greasy foods can be associated with hurt, loss, self-worth, even grief. And this is something I know, I know very, very well, and I'll come back to that in just a sec. And crunchy food, finally, is to do with unresolved anger and frustration. So you can't necessarily say those angry words at people that you want to share, but you want to crunch into something. And the same goes with people who want to crunch ice all the time. It can be some unresolved, pent-up frustration. So greasy, fatty foods is a really important one to acknowledge. A lot of people essentially overeat with high-fat processed foods, and they may not recognize what they're doing in the logical mind space, but on the emotional space, what they're actually trying to do is they're trying to hide. They want to hide away from the world. They want to add another layer. I know this personally because when I was 18 I lost my dad and the grief that I went through at that time lasted a number of years and my way of dealing with it instead of talking about it was basically to eat myself up to 110 kilos in weight and my food of choice wasn't chocolate and it wasn't it wasn't bread it was actually high fat foods processed foods it was pizza um, foods that basically inflamed my body and I would have to leave lectures at university because I had such terrible, irritable bowel. So if you're, if you're really looking into cravings and what might be sabotaging your own success with your weight or your weight loss, have a look. Is it nutritional or is it emotional? Be honest with yourself. And the best way to actually work through it is to start writing a daily food journal. So write down the foods, write down if there's been a stress, write down if you've had a craving, and then start to look at the patterns and see what's going on and see what's happened and see if you can link it all together and find out what's actually going on. And then start looking at your options and your alternatives and looking at different behavior. All right, next very quickly. Coming up for you guys right now. Is that all the screens? Oh, right. Okay, so that's my key to get the chocolate bark out of the freezer. Almost done. Oh, it's done. That shows you how quick it is. Ta-da. So we have this beautiful, tasty chocolate bark. What do I do? I keep it in the freezer, in a container. So if I am having one of those days, oh yeah. Oh. So good. Keep it in the freezer like this. As I mentioned, a tiny bit is all you need if you are having a little bit of a craving. And because you're a grown-up and you're in control of your life, you know when you've had enough or learn to recognize when you've had enough. For me, about that much 
is perfect. I'm going to try it. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, that's great. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's creamy. It's satisfying. It's nutty. It's crunchy. It's got a little bit of salt in there. It's everything I need if I am looking to food for a little bit of a, of a, of a prop up or if I just want to treat myself. That's what I do. And that's what these live streams are all about. Having good food that serves your health. Now, if you want to find out more, you can head to my website. It's loaded with recipes and great ideas on what you can make in your own home. And on there is all the details of how you can actually join up with my private Facebook group. In my private group, we talk about all sorts of things to do with dealing with our cravings, to do with exercise and movement, to do with what foods to eat, what foods you might want to eliminate. We talk a little bit about health and we do delve into that topic of emotional support and how to help each other. And the group is super cool. Shout out to all the ladies from my group watching tonight. You guys are amazing. They're a supportive group of amazing humans. And in that group, 7.30 on a Wednesday night, I deliver another live stream. So tonight's recipe for that group is the most divine self-sourcing chocolate pudding. It is low carb and it cooks in just four minutes. And no, my friends, it is not a mini sized one. It's not one of those mug cakes. We're talking full sized chocolate self-sourcing pudding absolutely delicious and your guests if you have guests over for dinner will never know it's good for them all right it's time for me to head away thank you so much for watching great to have you here in our new look kitchen which is the same kitchen just on a different angle it's awesome to see you guys great to have you with me hi andrew gilbert hi jeffrey andrew carla anderson it's so good to see you guys hi tracy marie oh i hope you're having a great time at the burns retreat there lynn nolan I've got chocolate and peanut butter fat bombs in the fridge at the moment. Might have to try the bark next time. It's on, my lovely lady friend. All right, I've got to go. Next live stream happening in three minutes. If you want to join that Facebook group, remember, head to my website, moniquebradley.tv, to sign up, and you'll get all the details there. All right, thanks to Pete behind the camera, who's my producer, and thanks to you guys for watching. Look after yourselves and stay fabulous. <laughs>